Good evening, it's Brother Bro here coming to you from the Cannes Film Festival and it's time to review Bird. It's written and directed by Andrea Arnold who has been to Cannes before and she's known for a style of indie filmmaking where she utilizes shaky handheld camera, natural lighting, and natural performances from actors to her storytelling advantage. And in Bird, there's no exception here. She really does have a mastery of creating intimacy with the camera and making it feel like the point of view of her protagonist. Fans of her work are gonna be pleased. It's a very warm and heartfelt film. The film is about a young Bailey who lives with her father, Bug, played by Barry Kogan, who's sort of struggling with the powerlessness to control anything in her life. The film stars Nakia Adams, who gives a great performance. She's just fantastic in how you you really cannot feel her performance at all. It's completely invisible. And she's both a character who we trust based on her street smarts and her wisdom, even at the young age of 12. And we can also feel her vulnerability and her innocence. Barry Keoghan here is a huge standout. I love this role for Barry Keoghan. It offers another shade to Barry Keoghan and what he can do is just completely impressive in how well he transforms and, and fits this film. Sometimes blending into the world that non-actors are actually inhabiting is a challenge for trained actors. And he does come across as just unrehearsed in, in the most delightful way. I really do think it's one of his best performances, even though he doesn't dominate the film. It's very much a supporting performance. And there's Franz Rogowski as the titular bird character. He's playing someone who intersects with the child's fantasy in some regard. Not going to go into more detail about that. You know, I've only seen Rogowski in passages, but he's so different here. He's just he's extremely earnest and sweet and lovable. And he makes some choices where his body language is resembling a bird. And sometimes they came across as a bit weird to me, like I couldn't fully buy it. But I think it's the right choice for the movie and like the, the fact that the role tightropes between these two worlds. It takes place in an impoverished community where everyone seems to be like hustling to live. And I don't think there are any characters in here who seem employed. For example, Barry Keoghan's character purchases a toad who releases hallucinogenic uh, slime from its back. And this is a consistently hilarious plot piece, like whenever it comes up, especially for the fact that he believes he has to sing to the toad in order for it to excrete its magical substance. This plot device also adding to the theme of fantasy intersecting with reality. So there's a whole lot to enjoy here. Like the world building was excellent where you often get shots just for one second of something truly fascinating. Like, you know, a bunch of kids jumping on a mattress in the front yard or like a tether ball pole that has like a tire hanging from it and a girl's just like hanging out and swinging in it. Like little details like that bring the world alive. And they also add a level of visual poetry to the film's world building. I've actually seen this film twice. The first time I saw it, I felt very confused by it because it kind of takes a turn that completely lost me. I felt I had to see it again, not only because I was confused, but I attributed my confusion to my lack of sleep. Can is really a balance of how much you can sleep and how many movies you can see. So I had a great night's sleep and then I went to see it again. And now I feel pretty clear, more confident on the reasons that I may not have connected to it on the same level as others, but I still believe this is a very strong film. But the crux of where this film loses me is in a magical realism plot device. And I don't have a problem in principle with the film using magical realism. I think that's interesting, but it feels like a crutch to resolve something that didn't get resolved in the actual movie. And I know other people feel this way and like are, can see my reasoning here. So I know it's not just me. Some some people this bothered and some people it just didn't and they thought the ending was cathartic and maybe it wasn't even logical but it offered them a level of catharsis that they were seeking in the film and that's totally fine maybe the film just works for you on an emotional level but for me I was just kind of confused with what we're supposed to be taking away from this the film has this like sentiment that you know everything's going to be okay um, and it's because this like weird thing happens and I'm like but w the weird thing I don't think actually happen so like why is it gonna be okay like what reason do we have to believe that what reason does the character believe she has like how did she grow how did she actually overcome these challenges i recommend the movie but i do feel a little bit cheapened by the ending i cannot predict whether that's gonna be a problem for you i'm somewhere between a six and a seven out of ten and i'm just gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna i'm not just gonna six up point five i guess now let's talk about awards just because uh, it was in like the top maybe 20 to 30 for our Oscar predictions. If this film did get like Palma d'Or from Cannes and then people were like, no, it's like really, really good. We need to nominate for a picture and director. And like people were trying to champion it. The nominations that could come along are like Barry Kogan would probably get supporting actor. The film could maybe get cinematography. It's that well loved. And then like picture director and screenplay. But I just don't think it's going to happen. The reviews aren't stellar. The Rotten Tomatoes score is like in the seventies, which really shocked me. I thought it would be higher than that. But the letterbox is very good. It's definitely one of the most well-received films at the fest so far. And for a lot of people, it's their favorite. 
But I think when it comes to forming a consensus around is this one of the year's best films, it's going to rely too heavily on people's subjectivity and and how they perceived that ending. Although I'd like Barry Kogan to get some awards attention for the movie. I just don't think it'll happen in, in a solo fashion. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Was there an animal in your childhood that you resonated with symbolically and then a person manifested who called themselves that animal and you had a journey, you had a journey with that character?